Hey everyone, this is Alaska from Call Out Culture. Um, I hope you're enjoying the podcast. And if you are enjoying the podcast and you feel inspired to start your own, let me tell you about the system that we use. It is called Anchor. Best things about Anchor, it's free. There's tools that allow you to create and record and edit your podcast right from your phone and your computer. Um, you can even add a song from Spotify directly from you to your episodes. The possibilities are endless of what you could create, whether it's like music analysis or your own radio show or something that the world's never heard before. I don't know what that is. You figure that out. Not my job. Yours. Anchor is going to distribute the podcast for you so it'll be heard on Spotify, Apple, and all the other podcast things you can use. Like All you do is you upload your podcast and boom, it appears in the other feeds. Um, you can also make money through uh, advertisements like this, or you can also set up like your own sort of Patreon fan support thing. Um, there's no minimum listenership, and uh, everything you need to make your podcast is in one place. So if you want to do a podcast, you want to be like us here at Call Out Culture, download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm and get started. Castro, we, we are like brothers, but... You move like the wind. You are unpredictable. And then still blowing in my face. <laughs> so I'm doing my, my, lamp, my Rizzo outro. Alaska, you hold the mic, but does the mic hold you? I don't think <laughs> so. Welcome to Call Out Culture Podcast with Alaska, Curly Castro. And still a rock. Talk to me. Talk to me. All right. Welcome to Call Out Culture, everyone. I'll be your host tonight, Alaska. I got the handheld mic. The Phil Donahue <laughs> joint. Pass that around the room, man. I want to. I want to get the long, like thin <laughs> Wink Martindale shit from the game shows back in the day. Don't like this. Wink Martindale. You know, hold that shit with like two fingers. Real, with your pinky real gentle, like, yeah. What was, what pinky was the stove out. god line? Where he's like, where the stove god said, "My mic different. I'm Bob Barker." That's the best <laughs> party here. <laughs> So, so we got an all-star panel assembled mm. because we have we have a very important topic to discuss tonight. Mm-hmm. Um, High it, importance. It's it's been at least blowing up my Twitter feed, and I'm sure a lot of other people's Twitter feed as well. Yep. And it is the uh, the Wu Tang show, the uh, an the American special, the saga. American saga, an American saga. <laughs> and uh, you know, before we get started, why doesn't everybody just quickly introduce themselves? Going around, I'm your host, Alaska. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I'm, yeah, take I'm away your thoughts. other I'm your other co-host, Zilla Rocker, South Philadelphia, drinking a Guinness Stout made in Ireland. Zilla, <laughs> come on, man, you're not doing this the whole episode. <laughs> I can't, man. Seriously, you, you have to chill. All right, also not really cash man. Sorry, I'm, yeah, you're doing it wrong too. Like you're doing some other amalgamation with real voice and something you think you're saying. Chill. I do it out of love. To... It, it's out of love. I get it, but you've man. done it about 20 minutes. We only started 19. Let's let's talk regular. So yeah. people can hear if the Wu Tang is here to stay. <laughs> I'm Curly Castro. I'm your third host, but I'm the host with the most. You spit sharp blades. You know, I'm sorry. Zilla. <laughs> so that's what I'm sorry. We'll let you let you yeah. Know. Um Midas the Beast. Y'all, y'all can hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah what's brother. There it is. Midas was good. Yeah, Midas the Beast, man in the building. Long time coming. Yeah, yeah, for sure. We're label mates. Yeah, yeah, a That's a that's, that's 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 Just re released. Midas just dropped the ill ass project. Appreciate you. So I re released yeah. it because I know yeah. you released it before. So now yeah. it's in multiple formats with a sidewalk. And we don't talk all about that, but yeah. I just want yeah. people to know that's the it PQ, is. the variant art, the, the Hank the Hank McCoy joint, the beast mm-hmm. one. That one's fire. Mm-hmm. Super, super fire. I have you here. Right. Yo, Cryptic One, mm. Adams Fam, Parada. What is what is this movie quality shit that, that just happened on my <laughs> shit, bro? What the fuck? Yeah, man, I don't fuck around, man. Like, nah, not at all. We got to talk about this afterwards. I need okay. all this shit, fam. Yeah, I'll, I'll put you in. I'll put you on, man. Sam, yeah. he got he got the custom vinyl set up because he probably changed it for color reasons. He does that. He does that. Yeah, no, it's you know it's all Wu Tang albums in the back now. <laughs> I didn't mean to interrupt. I just you came on the screen and like I thought I was in a movie theater. And shit. Nah, nah, it's all good, man. That's why I do this shit, man. <laughs> It's, it's strictly for my Zoom shit. No, I'm 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 setting up a live stream soon, so I wanted to get my visuals straight. But 
we're in an audio format, so no one can see this shit, unfortunately. But the shit looks tight, I promise you. <laughs> <laughs> they um, got word for us. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's it. That's my introduction, Cryptic One. Welcome back. What up, what up? But yeah, this is my second time here. Second? Third. Third, third I think. Third. 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 Oh, yeah, third. That's right, the, the Canox joint. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Pen. Yo, what up? It's me. <laughs> there it is. My name Pen. I like long walks in the park, daffodils. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mary Jane and whiskey. You know what I'm saying? Getting trapped on ferries with people you don't get along with. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yo, why yo, why does son ask the guy? Like, yo, how long before we get to Manhattan? <laughs> yo, that niggas ride the ferry. All like, the time. How do you ask? Yo, I was so confused. I'm like, the ferry is the main mode of transportation, public transportation to get off the island. If you're on the ferry, you know how. You know, um, didn't Meth work at the Statue of Liberty? Yes, Correct. he did. Yeah, for 20 years. 20 years. No one knows the answers to these questions. <laughs> this is my first time, even though it's my 30th first time. I don't know what's happening, yo. Can I can my I just name say is something Ghostface, about uh, and I, I like to something? overact every scene, guy. We're gonna get to it. We're gonna get the God. B lover. Oh my I even god! Take, look, pulls the cigarettes real hard, God. Sorry, y'all. There, there has like been a moment where he's crying every scene, and his eyes are just always bulging out of his head. He's always like this. What the fuck you mean? What the fuck you mean, All Bobby? Every time he chills out is when he's with his brothers getting roasted, right, and when he great. was smoking on the ferry, like taking it back. That's the one time I see yes. him. I said, "Oh, there you go, ghost." And he still hasn't given himself the name. So maybe when the name comes, okay. we have a slight curve of the character. <laughs> and before before Les gets to the, the hosting duties real quick, I just want to say shouts to Poison Pen because I, Pen, I was reading your shit online like 10 years ago. Was it Hip Hop Game? You used yeah, to write for yeah, hiphopgame.com. Yeah. Yes. So I used to read your, 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 your blogs back then and I thought you were great. And then uh, obviously from music, you, you've been dope. But I didn't meet you. I met you briefly at the the ninety now joint in like right before COVID, like December yeah, right twenty nineteen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you were freestyling with Mike Eagle out front. Yep, and you had my favorite bar of twenty nineteen. <laughs> what the fuck did I say? You said <laughs> it's like the Me Too movement, oh. and we still shooting. I was like, <laughs> that was the hottest <laughs> the head thing I've ever heard. L S. <laughs> Thank you for LS. that. <laughs> no pen. <laughs> He's freestyling, man. It was, I want to e- echo impeccable. that sentiment. I'm a um I'm a freestyle enthusiast. I try to do it like it was originally done. And I followed your career doing that. So I salute to you, brother. Mm-hmm. Cause you oh, laid no, down bro. some of the right, tops. And I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna meet that man. We're gonna be on the concrete. It's gonna be a uh, let's, let's let's do it. It's, it's funny yeah. because me freestyling is a rare occurrence now, but I still I still got I still do what I do. Oh, you got the muscle, you got it's, the muscle. It's, it's mm-hmm. muscle memory, but we don't exercise it as much as we used to. But I'm always oh, yeah, yeah. Oh man, always, back in I'm the day. Always ready. Yes, back in the day, <laughs> cats used to come with backpacks empty, but mine's full. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Yes, uh, all right. So but Wink Martindale or the, with the Donahue bike. <laughs> so <laughs> so listen, the 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 Wu-Tang American Saga show was announced that it was going to happen in October of 2018. When okay. you first heard there was going to be a Wu-Tang show, what were your like initial reactions? Like, Well, you know, it was what, coming what off of, um, so what, what was going on was it was another milestone for them, 25th anniversary. Mm-hmm. They had done that for the children piece. I was like 20 minutes. I think that was on YouTube. Then the amazing documentary from Ooh. Mike's to Men came oh, out. That blow great. our mind, right? That thing was, that was great. Amazing. So then I'm thinking, all right, we we cranking. You had a better tomorrow, we on whatever, but we still cranking out stuff. And so when I heard about this show, I was intrigued because I was like, okay, cool. They got one thing. It's gonna be another thing. It's gonna be another thing. I knew it wouldn't be documentary style, but I actually was not prepared for what it actually was. But I was excited because they were on an incline in terms of like hitting the milestone, getting back in the public eye, doing some features, remixes. There's like five songs on of mics and men. So, you know, it's just like Wu-Tang time, which comes every like 10 years, 20 years, you know, mm-hmm. and 25 years. So I was looking forward to it. Uh, I was confused because the documentary was flawless with the exception of they didn't really cover the solo albums as like much as they could have. That could have been a whole another three, four hours, which would have been ill. But I remember like they were making like Raekwon talk about they're going to do a Raekwon show. 
where Chuck English was going to play Raekwon. I think after like <laughs> Human Links 2 came out, he was going to do a movie and then he did like a crowdfunding thing for a Cuban Links documentary that never happened. And then like after the documentary hit, I was like, well, why do I need another show? Like I just watched four hours or eight hours of the documentary, which was, again, phenomenal. So once they announced it, I was like, well, this isn't going to be good. That was, I was like, the first thing I thought, like, it, it can't be better than what we just saw them do for four plus and talking like the roadies, all these people you didn't even know that they pulled onto the documentary. So once they announced it, I was like, it just seemed odd to me. So I'm just being honest as a diehard fan. See, I, I was I was the opposite. I was kind of excited about it. And then I read that Rizzo was writing it. Oh, and then I then I was like, oh, shit, I'm not sure about this. And, Legend of the Iron Fist. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I took it with a grain of salt, man. I, I knew it was going to be heavy on the entertainment and not necessarily. I knew it was heavy on the entertainment and not necessarily 100 percent biographical. Mm, right. Anything, anything that's, you know, uh, formatted for TV or movies like it's always like that, man. So I expect I expected to see a bunch of um some some fluff that wasn't even a part of anything just to keep the story going along for the timeline. Like like think about it. Like son's on the boat. He had a dude on the boat just happens to be playing reunited on the violin, right? Six times <laughs> the minutes. Meeting. Six, like, six times. Minutes. One loop. Like they could have they could have walked by him one time he was doing it, but they walked by him six times. He's still playing. <laughs> <laughs> now he's on the fourth verse. Now he's on the first fourth verse. I'm like, where's Kappa? Where's Kappa? Like but there. Is this though? You gotta you gotta keep in mind this. Like with diehards, we were right. around for the era. Yeah. Right. It ain't for us. We, 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 it's it's kind of not for us. We the know mic, too much the detail. Mics, the mics and men is for us. Yes. Right. Yes. yes. You understand yes. what I'm saying? Wu Tang American Saga is for casuals, people that may know a little bit yes. and yes. just want some entertainment and may get some actual facts within the entertainment. Right. So when, and, when and I they, look at it from that perspective, I'm not mad at the show. And, you know and, and they, they trained us for this. We right. we're we're lifetime movie fans. Aaliyah right. didn't get a cake that said Matrix, congratulations. That's not how she got into the movie. You know, um, but the, but um, I, a friend of mine, she she clashes with it because the new edition one was so good. But I said, that was like three parts. Like when they go that deep, right. the detail is that deep. You, you, but then when we watch like, hours. right, you know, when we well, watch like Get Rich or Die Trying or the Biggie movie, we know they're, they're playing with certain clay. Go ahead, Marty. No, nah, I was going to say, man, like, I, honestly, bro, like when it was announced, I was just on some old like, fam. I get to see a W every time I pull up Hulu. Like, mm. like fire. fire, you know what fire. I mean? Like, yo, <laughs> yo, I'm gonna keep it a buck. They could have did anything. I was game at that point, <laughs> yo, yes, because because like on some yo, I always feel like Wu Tang is like this this counterculture hip hop. Like, there's hip hop music, and then there's like the Wu Tang universe. It's like some yes. offshoot that don't even combined with the rest of hip hop, right? So right. like, it's always ill to me, like whenever there's some like, I feel like those dudes have to like force they, they way into everything. You know what I mm -hmm. mean? Like mm -hmm. Wu-Tang Wu -Tang is like this, the, the six peak bulls. Nah. They're just, they're just better. They well, just always, it's yeah. difficult. Cause like when I talk to people about what's your favorite, you know, when we talk about favorite albums of all time, right? Like you can't really mention no Wu-Tang albums because if you do, then you gotta mention like you. How you gonna mention Cuban and not mention Liquid? Right, right? Bang, so like, bang. But what are you gonna do? You're gonna mention five albums? Like you can't do that neither. So mm -hmm. it's it's like they exist in this off world where you gotta kind of have like a Wu Tang conversation that's separate than all the rest of the hip hop stuff. Mm -hmm. So I was just hyped to see it. Yeah, I'm like, yo, when I when I heard the uh, the intro come in, the it's not my favorite Rizzo beat ever, but I can no. go with it. You know what I'm saying? But I can ride with it though. I'm good. You know what I mean? Like, even like the opening titles credits, I'm like, did, did like a 16 year old make that on their phone? It's like there's like a cockroach when his legs moving, and there's like a razor blade. And I'm like, come on. No, bro. I will say this. You spent more than forty dollars on this intro. I'm like, please, guys. See, season one, and I know we're gonna get more into, it, but season one, the animation on season one threw me, y'all. I didn't. I wasn't. It was like because. It was no precursor for it. you know they would switch fire, like, though. Yeah, it was kind of They would fire, switch though. to animation like when it was following things. It was cool. Yeah, like but the video it was a game like, joint. Yeah, there was a lot of ideas in season one. That's mm. why I think season two will be a little bit more streamlined. If y'all could tell, they were trying a lot of artsy things in season one because they 
like my, they can get away with it. They will yeah. take it. So like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? We're going to roll with it. We roll, and, and the funny thing is, whether we're disappointed or not, you know, uh, certain solo albums we know have not been, you know, certain Wu albums, but we just, we do roll with it. Wu Lifers, we roll with it. I roll oh, yeah. with every Wu affiliate, Wu Tang thing, Wu versus this, Wu, you know, I roll with it. Yeah. Wu, Wu, um, now I follow guys that make, um, like Wu Tang dolls, like you know the one eight size dolls they make, mm-hmm. like Method Man dolls and, and Ghostface dolls. It's, it's definitely a planet, like Midas is saying. It, it's 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 its own mm-hmm. thing. So for them to get a show, to me, is just like another checkbox. Like you know, Michael Jordan had a show and mm-hmm. a lunchbox, and you know what I'm saying. So because yeah. they're such cultural icons, here's their show. It's just not a cartoon. Yeah, you feel true. Me? I mean, at the end of the day, we all talk shit about it, but none of us miss that shit on Wednesday. Not at all. Nope. Nope. It's my favorite comedy on TV. <laughs> oh, it's the summer's best comedy. Yeah. Or the fall. It's the fall's best comedy. I laugh so much. It's amazing. But they do ill stuff. Like they had, like, I was watching with my man. Uh, and then like I didn't even pick, I didn't even catch that the DJ at the Ohio party was fourth disciple. Like I didn't even pick up on that. Oh shit. Yeah, yeah, they, 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 yeah, I, they, I think they it was mathematics. It. Nah, at the, in, in oh, Ohio. Oh, math, math, math is working with the vine. Yeah, 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 math is working with the vine. Yeah, math is drawing, yep. Right, 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 right. Yeah, this little, yeah. little East Bay. Right. So, so that the little stuff is dope, cause he was like, he was like, uh, he was like, yo, who's that, who's that dude that's DJ? Oh, that was He was like, oh, that's fourth. Yeah. Oh, so they'll okay. do stuff like that for yeah. us. Like that's because worth it we'll for me. You know that. what I mean? But the, but the old, but and again, like Penn said, for like an eighteen-year-old getting into hip hop, heard a Wu Tang. This is a good way to to get them in there and to, instead of diving them into albums per se. Because well, everyone not younger than us it. just knows them from their shirts at fucking Target and H and M. Yeah, right. like they don't the know w. like to cow. You know what I mean? They don't know no, like no, PLO no, style and shit. <laughs> That's not gonna be the one. You, you know what? You know what confused me for a second? How they they switched the spec to deck like Joey Badass was inspected. Yeah. 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 And, and then I'm watching him and, and I'm like, okay, who's this Same guy? Bandana. Uh-huh. Same bandana. I'm confused. Like mm-hmm. I think he posed it, and I'm like, yeah, because they not they not naming dudes either, right? You know what but, I mean? but like, yeah, they, they did it. Su- they did it subtly with the um. When he caught the tag and it said the tag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Like what I mean is like when dudes is coming on the camera, they not like this is you know what I mean? Like for right, instance, right, right. the light skinned dude is general wise. Like you would not know that. You know what I mean? The only mm-hmm. reason I knew that is because I had subtitles on. <laughs> And it's yeah, 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 yep, same. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Same. Like you, you just wouldn't even know who none of these people are. I still don't know who the light skinned dude from the first season was in the beginning. Oh, they got killed. The one that they hey, who's that guy? Yeah, well, they, they said that was like an amalgamation of like three guys they yeah, knew. I'm gonna say that had to be somebody made for TV. Like the sneakers right. was like one guy, and then the, the way he was right. was another guy in the hustler. Like it was like a that couple of guys. But do you but remember cop- even like in season one when he met uh Riz and met Prince Paul? Nah, remember I remember that. that. Yeah, that was, I don't remember when they that. were signing the Tommy Boy, they're like, "Yo, oh, yeah, check yeah, it out. Yeah, yeah, this yeah, is yeah, Prince yeah, Paul. Yeah. He's down yep. with Stetson yeah, Sonic. Yeah, yeah. We think he should hear your beats." And I interviewed Prince Paul around that time last year. He did the soundtrack for uh, "Who Killed Malcolm X." He didn't even know that they put him in the show. Wow. <laughs> fuck. He was like, "Word, <laughs> I'm in that show." I was but like, "Yeah, I got some guy." <laughs> See, they'll group things Just nice. like they'll, they'll group. Like, yeah, he was there. That was nice. I like that scene. Yeah. But they'll group things like and remember straight out of Compton. You know what I'm saying? Like Snoop and Dre make uh, gin and juice like right there in an empty house, like with the piano. Like, no, that didn't happen like that. You know what I'm saying? But he's like, Dre, that's a cool beat. Check this out. One, two, <laughs> three. It's a big flow. Huh? Yeah, keep going. That's a good one. <laughs> but so, Don't yeah. they, wasn't, didn't Tretch pop up in an episode as well? Yes. In season yes. one, I think it was. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's like, like 91-ish. Adam, um, when they were doing like shows, like a, it was like a performance. He was performing to us. Like, like industry that. showcase shit? Yeah. yeah or something like yeah. that. Yeah, when uh, what's the names in season one two? Jamie Hector from uh, Marlo. Yeah, yeah, he was, he, like, yeah, he was a, manager, the shitey dude. Ma- manager yeah. that just dumped him. He said, "Oh, the single ain't doing." And remember yeah. that, y'all. Oh, mm-hmm. the single ain't doing good. Oh, I recorded an album. Yeah, we ain't interested in that. Mm-hmm. Keep going with that. The single ain't did nothing. Keep that album. Oh, that was <laughs> horrible, man. <laughs> Dreams dashed. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead, Lance. So, all right. So, since since we start dabbling on season one, like, what what were your thoughts on season one? Like, some of the high points and things along those lines. Uh, all right. To me, a low point, and only because it was it led to too much derisive conversation, was Raekwon and Ghost like actually shooting at each other. Mm-hmm. What they were trying to do is illustrate people from similar neighborhoods, but there's a dividing line. Right. So I don't know if I'm from the hill. I don't know Stapleton Cats and same and vice versa. 
So you you don't have beef if you actually bump into each other. Well, if you haven't bumped into each other, but there is like stand up, standing beef. It's a standing call. Don't come over here. Don't come over there. So I think they they dramatize that too much. And so people are calling, yo, did Raekwon really shoot it? I'm like, not. Like, it's not like what they saying, you know what I'm saying? They just ain't fuck with each other because they were from two sides of the same coin or whatever. Um, but at the same time, like when you're young, I mean, when I was younger, you didn't know that they all came from disparate parts of New York. You thought they all lived right. on the same damn block. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like they half like, comes from Brooklyn. <laughs> right, and, so, and, and you know what I'm saying? And there's, long, and there's connections to Queens, there's all of that. So you got to understand that how daunting it was for Rizzo to really gather them. So yeah, maybe he did trap them on a ferry or something. Cause Lord knows. Uh, I thought season one, I thought like Dave East was just like woefully miscast as Method Man. Like I'm giving, I'm hoping he See, turns I thought he was around. actually pretty good as Method Man. He's I, I just saw Dave <laughs> East the entire time, but you know. just, right, right. Only because Method Man is the most charismatic rapper ever. And Dave East is just standing there like, yo, check it out. Um, I got like, yeah, when he fat did bags met, of yeah, skunk. When he did, I yeah, got, like, he's was, just like, you know what's difficult? This first though? acting job. Like, you can't be Method Man with your first job of acting. But then the flip side is the kid who's playing dirty. He's amazing. amazing. He's, he's great. Like, he's, he's great. Greg, Crip, Crip, what you going to say? No, I'm just saying ODB like that. That's a high point easily. Like, yes, yeah. like I just want to see an ODB show. With yeah, that. he's like from a different show where he's just having a fucking blast running around, like get with chicks. I also like um, dudes. I like Shalai Raekwon. It's it, it's it's funny just because every time they go to one of his scenes, they, they might as well play like some Spike Lee, Malcolm Lee. But he's got uh, like, like the fat suit under the leather. It's always, it's always like, his, his thing is always somber. It's yeah. always like a Mo' Better blues scene when it goes to him. He's standing there talking to his mom, his shoulders hunch, he's sleeping on a rooftop. Like he's yeah. living a sad existence. So the funny thing I like about season two, I know we're talking about season one, to see him happy, because he's in Fireside, like bumping in the EPMD and smi- oh, fire, yeah. excuse me, yeah. smiling yeah. and stuff. So I um I like Raekwon's story. Like, so that's my answer in, in season one. I was a, I was appreciative of that. Except you know, the shootout stuff. You know, you know yeah. it was wild. He in the in the what's the other show in the in the get down, yeah, yeah. Shaolin fantastic. Mm-hmm. Now he plays a rapper from Shaolin. <laughs> <laughs> Shamik is nice though. He's it's, 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 it's difficult, man. Like I was he always uh, plays New Yorkers. Like he's from he's from like, yep. like Atlanta or something. Yep. Yep. Hey. You gonna say Midas? Nah, I was just saying, like, it's, I was telling my man, like, yo, who, you know, because I'm real hard on the guy who plays Ghostface. Like, I'm oh real hard. I'm, I'm real hard on him. Dog. I'm, oh, I'm real hard on him. But, he's a but, nightmare. Oh. He's, he's a nightmare. But, <laughs> but when we was talking about it, you know what I mean? My man said something I'm like, yeah, you're right. Because it's like, who's going to play the most charismatic rappers of all time, bro? Like, and and they're still living. It ain't like they're dead dudes. Right, right, right. You know what right. I mean? Like Ghostface. <laughs> well, Ghostface was. I, I just we'll do a better Ghostface than Ghostface. Right. I mean, he's alive right now. You know what <laughs> yes. I'm saying? Being Ghostface, being hella yeah, right. Ghostface, right. all the yep. time. You know what I mean? Yep. So like, it's kind of hard to. Who could be Method Man, bro? Like these dudes oh. are like all time character. Right. Yes, yeah. definitely. And you I'll also got to look that. at the budget they probably had for the show. They're not getting like. Well, who's opening yeah. title credits? Right. I know. The only dude, not a lot of money. Get, uh, they, they, they'd have to get some like some of those dudes from from overseas that play right. those fucking those <laughs> funny English dudes. Yeah. Yes. Hey, yeah. Idris yeah. Elba. Yeah. They, they, they're yeah. gonna get uh, yeah. some of them motherfuckers <laughs> like they come over here and beat. And beat. I studied at Cambridge. Like, they're gonna get <laughs> Mahersala, <laughs> Mahersala Ali. He gonna be Inspector Deck or something. He's gonna be Deck or something. Oh man, they gotta do the de shit. They have to get a whole bunch of older actors and de age all of them because mm. you need that type of caliber. You need Wood real, Harris de age. But no, um, Midas, I think what you what you pointed on is actually um stellar. How they they were also like we're saying the Wu Tang plan. They were so charismatic. They had characters and they were all different types. Right. They already so to characters. try to mm-hmm. to try to portray that. You really got to go deep with it to get you know shoot even to get um. I'm I'm interested to see how the new deck spits deck versus now. So because I was kind of oh, okay. But how do you feel great. about deck being replaced like Aunt Viv, like mid show? <laughs> <laughs> I don't I didn't mind I it. Thought badass was serious. incredible because he's badass a real actor. Badass was good, but he's still Joey Badass. So mm-hmm. making him a lesser known guy makes me believe more that it's deck. If y'all get what I'm saying. Right. Like it's it's Joey Badass, and I'm I love Mr. Robot and all that, but oh, I think it's still a little Robot. bit of badass in that. 
and his cadences were off. I'm big on like, if you're going to play the role and you're going to be an athlete in it, and that's what rapping is, is athletic sport. So, so what like, you saying? I, what you saying is they should have got Action Bronson to play Ghostface. That's what you saying? Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. But 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 good I knew point. that was coming. I knew hey, that yo. was coming. But good point. But like, check it, check it. Like the way um Omar Epps plays basketball in Love and Basketball. He don't move like a basketball player. And so I'm big on these right. cats that are rapping. But you know what it is? It's kind of difficult when you when you book other rappers to play rappers. Because they're, mm, they're, they they right. already gonna use their right. they're always gonna use their True. cadence like <laughs> right. there's, there's, there's right. never gonna be a way they can emulate that person. So it have to be someone that is not a rapper. True. That is that is that. So they're they're blank palette and shit. Mm. Right, and they can lock so in. Take that on without using any of this is what I would do because no, this is not you. You're this person. Yeah, right. you're a rapper. Being another rapper is kind of hard to not be you even a little bit because you run. Right. So you're right. doing the rapping part, you're still kind of doing you as you're doing them. You know what I mean? Right. That's yes. a good point, Pam. So, so do point. you guys think that like Wu Tang was like too omnipresent, especially for us, like too omnipresent in all of our lives for this to ever like really sort of click the way they would want it to? Like when when I think of like the NWA movie, like that hit hard. That hit hard. It, it hit hard, right? But you know, they had a Hollywood budget. Mm-hmm. Right. But, it was just two hours in and out. Right, in and out, right, but right. that was so long ago too. Like you know, that was like eighty-eight to ninety. It was like True. two years, years ago. Years. Okay, you know thirty I mean? plus. Yeah. Right. So that so, was time and only to like you, and only really Cube and Dre have gone on to be like so, people that have been around in our lives for thirty years. Right. Right. Not Ren or Yella. Yeah, but I mean, them dudes I mean, is also you know, not Yella, characters Yella, like Yella like the heavy move. to the, um, Fair, yeah. the adult industry. So he's correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like like oh yes, Yella. Like, yeah, yeah. Yep. Too. <laughs> like yeah. Cube, 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 and Dre do not have. You can find people to play Cube and Dre way easier than Ghostface in yeah. Old Dirty Bastard. You That's know what I mean? And, yeah. Yeah. Like, right. Those do. You know what? They're gonna have the same problem when they start doing wrestling movies. Mm-hmm. And they start trying to find people that's going to have like to play Ultimate Randy Warriors? Savage. Like, who's yeah. going to play these guys? You know what I'm yeah, saying? That's like, a good point. It's, when it's they, when be, they do it, when they act it, because so, they're acting. They're already in that acting. Role too, right? <laughs> yeah. As rappers, as wrestlers, yeah. right? They're already yeah. playing these roles. And they've gotten good at it because it became their job. So, like, when you start rapping, you, you, you're being a character or whatever. But now you're hired. You know what I'm saying? Inspector right. Dex been Inspector Dex. How about this? Is it better if you have, like, remember, like, when Anthony Mackie played Tupac? And he just didn't do anything the way Tupac would. <laughs> he was like, yo, was what's up, Shug? It's me, Pac. Hey, what are you doing here? Like, he had no twang. Nothing was. He was just Anthony Mackie with a baldy and a bandana. And he was like, yo, I see those bad boys dudes over there. Let's run up on them. Let's do it. OK, I, I, he just only, totally only, sidestepped only everything about Pac. It was kind of cool. I like how Gravy did the Biggie in the Biggie movie. Like, that was good. He wasn't he was cool. doing yeah, he was good. too much. You know what I'm saying? He wasn't doing too much, but he's doing just enough. So I don't Pac know. Would be, Pac would be another hard one. That would that be. Is I, hard. I, I didn't even you... watch the Pac movie. Did you guys watch? No. That oh, no. I, 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 I saw the movie. The, the guy, the, the guy that played Pac, looked he like looks. He like looked like him. Yeah, he did right. look like. I mean, him. the movie was it, all right, but I mean, but the they, dude looked. Like man, my Pac. problem with the hmm. movie was what we're talking about. They started shoving in things like he ran into Jada Pinkett on some set. We know that didn't really happen. Like right, they start right. trying to make things happen quicker than they actually could have happened in real right. life because they don't have the time to tell us that type of story. Right. So, you know, we understand the thing has a beginning, middle and end. So, you know, it, it's going to follow some tropes and, and traits and they're going to weave in things like I you hear all the time. Even the ones even the movies that say based on a true story, there's always oh this person was an amalgamation of 15 people. But that's why they say based. Yes. Uh, yes. There's actually, um, if y'all look it up, I can't remember, but there's actually a documentary or an explanation of those phrases based on a true story app, like explaining how it means what it says, but doesn't mean what it says and how they could use it. Right. That, way. Yeah. Like, that, that means the, tr- the real story was the inspiration for what right. we're telling you. Yeah. That's right. all that shit means. Yeah, oh, so let's take the Chainsaw um, Massacre. They're like, based on a oh, true God. story, when that was but it's just Ed about Gein. like Ed Gein, who was just like some weird, like pervert killer. Yeah, exactly. it wasn't like a Mother family of family. chainsaw cannibals. Yeah. <laughs> but yo, let's, um, and this is the time, let's yeah, take let's a little take a break. break. We gotta get some sponsorships. Talk to you by Manscaped, our first you know that. sponsor. Yeah. <laughs> we got an extra kit. Ball sent. Yo, man. Brothers, take care of your balls. Yeah, we got the sprays. The hey, call out culture listeners. I want to let you know about 
a new sponsor for Call Out Culture. That's right, we're brought to you today by Manscaped, who is the best below-the-waist grooming champions of the god darn world. That's right, Manscaped. They're going to give you precision engineering tools around your family jewels. No more of those rusty scissors with glue on them that your kids were using. No more of those weird, like, kitchen drawer scissors that you're going to use that might give yourself a homemade vasectomy. You're getting the top of the line tools with their fourth generation trimmer, the Lawnmower 4.0. You heard that right. It's 4.0 and it's the Lawnmower. You ever seen the Fenway Park outfield where they do the sock in the middle of the field? You could do that when you're drunk with the 4.0. Trust me, I've done it, and I've got the green monster. Well, it used to be green, but now it's not anymore. That's right, so there's over 2 million men worldwide who have used Manscaped and trust Manscaped, and you could get down with this by using the exclusive offer. You're going to get 20% off, free worldwide shipping, if you use the code COC20 at manscaped.com. So you put that code in at checkout, you're going to get hooked up with the whole thing. That's right, 20% off free shipping that code again coc20 and just go to manscaped.com that's 20 percent free shipping manscaped.com and the goddamn code is coc20 unlock your confidence and always use the right tools for the job manscaped no more having to use the power standard fellas manscaped the lawnmower 4.0 get your shit tight get it right and go to Manscaped. You can even get other things like underwear. You could get weird, like, not weird, I guess, good smelling lotions to put down there and make your stuff not smell like bleachy and weird like you've been running around all day. You get it all. Just use the code COC20 at manscaped.com and you will get 20% off, free shipping, and a beautiful set of balls. That you could put on your Christmas tree if you want. Show your family. Everybody will be proud. They'll be like, look at my son's balls. They're so taut. So well shorn. And that's all because you went to Manscaped. So be the pride of your mom. Be the jewel in her eye. Go to manscaped.com, mother efforts. Peace. Alright, we are back. So I got a, I got a quick question for you guys. Um, because Wu Tang produced it, Rizza wrote it, like everybody in Wu Tang's an executive producer. Do you think that this story would be better and more interesting if somebody that wasn't in Wu Tang was putting the story together? Yes. Big time, no. Mm, I say no. no. I I think no because I think the objective lens would would make it too much. You know, like like if you have risen them writing it, they're gonna show the bad side. An objective lens might skip right over that and make it all about these triumphs, and they just skip skip stuff, and it's not as um. I I think no. I really think no. Okay. See, I, think, I, think I think it would be the opposite. Me too. I agree. I see that, but I th- I think no. I think more more the, about the negative stuff. I think that that people are less likely to tell the negative stuff about themselves. Right. Okay. Than an outside. Well, you know the thing is though, man. Like, look, let's 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 be real. They're showing a lot of fails so far. In these but but let's let's let's, let's 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 keep it a buck though. They're all executive producers, but they don't got shit to do with it. Right. Mm. It's it's risen, it's bro. Risen. <laughs> <laughs> so 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 it is it is you know it's one guy's opinion of how all this stuff went. We right. we know this, right? Like we yes. we, we can generally agree with this. <laughs> yes. uh, they only got meth down because they was like, "Yo, he's in the acting world too. Like, let's Yo. fucking make him part of this shit." Like somehow, yeah, they needed meth, but like these niggas don't know what's going on on this fucking show, bro. Like, yeah, just who, got- who are we kidding? <laughs> you the are really really to be too late. Right, the the executive. That's why he wasn't a character in the first season. The executive yeah, producer yeah. credit you is got, just and you, for because you for, got for, and it was in um he was in litigation. Yeah, yeah cases yeah. pending. Yeah. That's why. That's why yeah. he wasn't in the first season. Well, the, Him the, and Rizzo had some stuff. The going. executive producer credit is just so that they all get money off the show. That's really yeah, yes. what what that boils yeah. down to. So so this is Rizzo's show with Rizzo's ideas and the way Rizzo sees it. You know what I mean? So like I'm sure I'm sure he's not gonna do, like if you listen to the interviews these guys are having about the show. They don't know what the look. fuck. But no, so check it out. Riz, Riz is working with this guy. I could be wrong in the name, but his name is like Michael Say, and it's like TSE. He's uh-huh. another writer, but it's funny when things come up and they ask him questions, he always kind of goes, Yo, you know what? I refer to Rizzo. He always like defers uh-huh. to Rizzo when people ask him stuff in interviews where they're trying to get like some factual stuff. Because what I think is people thought it would be, I don't know, 
because they're because there's a certain myth about them, they thought it would hit all those markets. Like I said, and um, Straight Outta Compton just came out. So I think people th- uh, thought it would be a little bit even more to the point, like Straight Outta Compton. But we all knew, like Mike is saying, we knew when I saw RZA's name, we knew what, we knew what it was. Yep. Big man, you know, Quillis said your name. Big man said your name. Quillis, mm. old man Quillis knew who you was. We knew what that was as soon as we, I watched Iron Fist and the sequel. Oof. We know the reason. I never, no, I'm good. You saw the uh, sequel? Yes, I, mean, you, I watched the sequel. Hey, you, you, you a Wu-Tang yeah. fan for real. I'm, I'm not. Yeah. Your, man, <laughs> your man Batista's in there with golden skin or something Yo, like I'm, that. I'm not, I'm, not a, I'm not a big enough Wu-Tang fan, bro. I, you you took the cake, fam. Not even on Redbox. I wasn't nah, nah, I, I was out. I, I was I out. I think I can't remember how I My man Jim was in one of them shits. My man Jim was in that shit doing something crazy. He got killed, I think, but yeah. Oh man, man, that's rough. Um, you, really, um, you really, really love Wu. <laughs> yeah, I do, yo, bro. yo, 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 Pen. You know how you can tell somebody really love Wu, bro? Yeah. Yo, play, play that RZA makes a beat in Guitar Center. Oh, oh God! Oh God! Hey, no. hey, play that with dudes. And if anybody is like, yeah, well, you know, then you already know what it is. <laughs> You're impartial. <laughs> I think. I think if an outsider, because there's enough, there's enough mythology about them and then i i have both of riz's books i have the Dow of woo and i have the other one and then again like i had the video game read all the liner notes all the interviews over the years right i feel like in capable hands the show could have like a clear cut feel to it i think my only real issue with the show is it's like it's filmed in a way that like my, my wife sat on the couch with me i started one of the episodes of season two my wife knows Wu Tang. She saw the beginning. She's like, "What is this show?" I told her. She's like, "This looks like a fucking joke." Like that's her opinion for five minutes. Like the way it's filmed, she's like, "This looks yeah. like some sucker shit." You know, and I, she just walked out I, of the room. I was like, "Damn, I, I really like the way it's filmed, bro." Like <laughs> I ain't gonna front. Like I don't couple mind. a couple of us was sitting around. Like you know what it is? It doesn't look amateurish, but it doesn't look like everything else on TV mm-hmm. either. True. There you go. So, it doesn't so have like a TV. It, it has a it has a look to it. Like it kind of looks like. Hulu was trying to make a fake ass HBO show. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, uh, fake. like we, you know, like they, they don't quite have HBO budget, but like right. we go on do our HBO fake shit. It's, it's kind of like, like that, but I like, I like it. I feel so, like in the first season, they, they, they tried to get a little more artsy. Yes. I feel like they watched Atlanta and were like, ah, mm, yes, good point. Great great point. That, and they can't, they don't have the talent to do that shit. Like whoever, whoever directs the episodes, whoever, is is a showrunner like when they were sliding into yeah. those animated things exactly. was, that's yeah, what yeah. i was saying there was Taking a whole like off. point where there's like uh when homeboy gets shot um oh they're man uh, like a video game yes the video yeah, yeah. yeah like yeah. like that's straight out of atlanta kind of shit right there mm. so so crib i get that actually kind of like ties into a question i wanted to ask because i was just reading that this is actually also produced by uh brian glazer who oh, was, I know did like we arrested know development with Ron man. Howard? Twenty four, yeah. yeah. So like, having that tips. kind of power, and then Cryptic bringing up Atlanta, <laughs> it got me thinking: if you could make this into like a crossover show with another show that existed in the past, what show do you think would work? Like I'm thinking, like if this show was told arrested development style. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh! I know for sure. If you would tell this story, um, through the Becker lens, yeah. Becker? Becker, yeah. CBS Becker. Yeah. Now Becker, you think it's cramped in because of the sets, but think don't think about it like that. Like that would be the studio. I don't you know, know anybody saying? that's ever watched Becker other than you. I love <laughs> Becker, yo. It's I like think it's like the work. one Ted Danson show that nobody talks about. Yeah, that would work. What about like what about like New York Undercover? I was thinking I about was that. just about to say that. Oh, wow! I was just about to say that. Yep. So what you follow Ray and Ghost as they keep doing Wu Tang business is like I just, is it I just think on like Twitter? New York undercover and they're solving had, crimes every week. Yeah, and like they're wearing Tim's a lot. Of what, yeah, and, they, and and they do a song. Wear Tim's, they do a right. song at the end of the show. And then they meet Heavy D and <laughs> just fucking club, hang yeah. out. Heavy D was always popping up on your kind of comedy. pops up and does this. The song musical the guest was crazy. And when you go back and look at it, you're like, oh my goodness, I forgot Gladys Knight was on the show. Like it, 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 it gets there. Gladys Knight was on the New York undercover. I think, I think that's pretty much it. I, what if it was like Herman's head and everybody was a character in Riz's, Riz's head? <laughs> all, all the Wu Tang members were in Riz's all head. All the Wu Tang members. That's a pretty good. Oh, that'd be head. great. That'd be great. 
that would be great it would have been a cool like mtv animated show like in the mid to late Mm. 90s when they would just do the weirdest shit like the max shit yeah Yeah. the max and like the head Mm -hmm. you know what i mean shit like eon flux and all that like project runway with capadonna (laughs) Oh my god! It was his cap of birthday whack, today. That's whack to delicious. Throwing stuff out the window. Nah, do it again, fam. Like just tossing designs out. Yo, the, the other day I saw him on IG. It was his birthday. He was like, "Yo, man, for a long time I was allergic to shrimp. And now I'm eating shrimp somehow." <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah, what? Is a treasure. Revolution. You yeah, know what? Revolution. What did it for Kappa was that album cover. That's what allowed him to eat shrimp. B. Oh, that, that, the all that Tarzan? attention you got from that, the Tarzan yo, one? Uh, if you do, yo, if you do an album cover like that, you become immune to all, <laughs> all type of shit. And the funny thing was people were throwing him covers on their own, like, Bruh, free. Like, anybody would throw this dude a cover. Yes, uh, exactly. He's the greatest. I was like, I've listened to many Kappa albums, not that one. There's one album he made where there's just no hooks, where he just bars out all the time. Doesn't he have, like, Legend of the Milk Cow? Or he has a continuation? <laughs> no, he has, um, he has, um, the first album, part two, right? Then he do, like, Pillage part two, two, which is a dis- yeah, disaster. Yeah, I know it's a disaster. Oh, the Yin and the I... Yang. That, now, that album is a disaster. Yeah, hey, really they got rough. that joint with Jermaine Dupree and the Brat yes, on there, though. the Brat, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's a bad album, man. That, it's so got that, two you know models, and then it just goes off the fucking... That's, yeah. the last, that, that's the last of the budget, yo. How much we got left? Yo, fall up JT and the Brat, yo. Yeah. Do it. I, I think that was, I think that was the Brat's last like feature before, Cap- you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I, hope this, I hope this Cap album. Hits. Yeah, hey, before she started doing radio, that yeah, was the last joint. Yeah, oh yeah. my god, she's like, all right, I'm just gonna be, I'm gonna put my best foot forward. This is gonna be it. <laughs> she's on the same album with Timbo King and Shaheem. She's like, this is this is gonna take me to the stratosphere. Fuck it, oh, check off. So let, let's let's discuss this cast for a minute. All right, I'm gonna throw out a. a Wu Tang member, and you tell me your thoughts on the casting. Oh boy! All right, it's okay. word associations. Don, let's, let's do it. start with Capadonna. Was he? What, I it was for his part. Right. He it was, was in the interesting. Prison. He was, he in, was the in the jail, right? Yeah, yeah. he was in jail yeah. in season one. So it was interesting. I didn't necessarily like the guy they had playing him, but I liked what they were doing with him. And so, if we see him later down the line, they planted that seed. If they get to like a season three or four, I guess. <laughs> For him to pop back up, but I, I didn't necessarily like the actor per se. But I'm being a nitpicker. But I liked the way they had him in the jail, help and stuff like that. They made him seem mad older than everybody else, yeah. if, yeah, I, if yeah, I remember, I remember correctly. That. So that yeah. kind of threw me off a little bit because he seemed like they seemed like like he seemed mad older than Divine, like way older. He mm-hmm. seemed right. Mad. And I didn't like that he was kind of walking around the prison rhyming. I'm like, of course. He's it's <laughs> was he doing like the Winter Wars oh, bars or something? Kevin Donner, he might he might have actually been doing that, though. Yeah, right, <laughs> right, 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 right. right, right. <laughs> Alias Daryl Hill, bring thugs back to kill. Like he's just walking around. All the Saying time. that shit. That's a good point. That's a great point. <laughs> Poppy Wardrobe King. <laughs> he is. Is he the best dressed rap- rapper over 45? Right now. Well, so. look, look. The whole Wu is over 45, so he got some competition now, right? I think he's the best one. Because 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 Ghost, Ghost, Ghost is still out here. And Ray Ray Ray, 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 Ray is Ray, Ray, is, Ray is fly. Ray yeah, Ray Ray been, fly. Ray been Ray clean. Ray been clean. Yeah. The, the, but Kappa yeah. still yeah. wears like bright, colorful, like exuberant shit. You know yeah. what I mean? Like he still, yeah, goes, yeah, there. He yeah. still goes there. I think he's he the best. There. That's my number one. I know who the worst dress member is, but I'm not gonna go there. Look, continue. Well, you on. said you said the jizzle. Put it in the chat. Put the it in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, the so yeah. speaking of the jizza, what do we think of the jizza? I think he's pretty good. I like that one. He's pretty I good. He's very serious and you know, not funny or playful, which this guy is, which is good. The voice is you know, again, tricky to pull off. Jizz's got a very distinct voice, but the hair and then the gold tooth and then him standing there, you know, doing a five percent or stuff, and then kind of being like the yin to the the yang of dirty. I like them too. Like he's so straight and normal, and dirty's just fucking all over the place. Like they're they're kind of a fun pairing on the show. I think he's solid. He wasn't in the first season a lot. Remember, he was well, doing I, like worse than the genius. I hope shit. we get a this. So bringing up the jizzle specifically is what makes me really hope that we get a third season. Mm. Because I just don't feel like there's much Jizza in the series at all. And what we know is like Jizza is a foundational piece. And like you form like Voltron and the Jizza happen. But it's like he's not as important as like four other people on the show. So right now, I I, I hope that his importance gets leveled up as things go. Because, yeah, because he's kind of he's kind of, you know, nondescript at the moment. 
know what I'm saying? But I, I think the is he is in doc. the family. He's in he's uh, but it's basically the like the first season's like the Diggs family circus. Here's right. all the things with the sister, <laughs> the mom, Divine, all that. And then he's kind of like satellite member kind of popping because in Because he lives in Brooklyn. He lives yeah, in Brooklyn. The but then him yeah. and Dirty in the se- second season, they're like paired together, which because is really Dirty cool. Because Dirty lives in Brooklyn. Right. Like right. It's, so <laughs> having them link up is awesome. You know what I mean? And he's if giving people advice. understand the, the geography of New York, then it makes sense where people are. Like, but I, I agree with you, Monty. It's not the way the show is laid out. They're not giving Jizza a lot to do if they're just sticking to like when he comes to rhyme. And stuff yeah, like that, true. Right? Yeah, right. You know, and so I, I agree and, and, and we know that his importance is way up there. You know what I mean? Right. But like we're not really seeing. But but, you know, they've so far in this season, they focused a lot on the Ohio stuff, which right. you know, I, I, he wouldn't be around for. I just hope he gets true. a chance to. True. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, it, I mean, it seems based on the previews that they're going to get into like the whole first album. Yeah, you got like right. all the footage right. of them on the chessboard so, and everything. So, what, are they yeah. gonna have Master Killer pop up? I feel Probably. like he already did, though. I thought he did. I, thought I think I he remember. did. I don't remember. I remember. I remember. Hold when, on, when, me... when RZA when RZA was this. selling the um CDs out front when he was yeah. doing the tapes out front of yep. the place, and the guy came and asked them. Supposedly, that's oh. Master Killer. Yeah, oh. they got but then, one but guy. Like Jizza brings talk. in Master Killer into the mix, so maybe right. so I a, think he'll come on the last time. episode of the second season if they're working on the album, something like that. Like, yo, we need another verse. He, you know, he does that verse that, on Chess Box, and, and he does that verse, and they can in, just cut it, you know, bang. Yeah. yeah, they're like, something that's like dope. That. What's your name? He's like. I think it's going to be Master Killer. And then the credits <laughs> roll. They're like, oh shit, it's him. Now, um, I like that they're bringing up. The kung fu stuff, but there's something distinct. If we were anybody that was around when Wu Tang dropped, it was the kung fu fighting sounds that was so distinct. Because right, nobody was really even using that, and RZA made that like almost a staple in like the mm-hmm. first wave of beats. It was always a kung fu fighting um, right. sounding song on everybody's record. So um, I want to see that moment in the studio because one thing I will say, um, Hustle and Flow, all of its flaws and all the great things. When they make that song with that beat, that's one of the greatest recreations of making a beat and feeling it in the studio than I've ever seen. And of course, maybe not, it's not real time. Crip would know maybe the guy leaves, comes back and you worked on a beat, but that, with the way they build that up and he spit, I love that. So if they can fake something like that for RZA putting in the fucking Kung Fu sounds, I'm, I'm, I'm all for it. Hands up, hands to the sky with that, if they do that. Yeah, I'm there for that. I, I have a lot of issues with the beat making on the show. But as a, <laughs> like that shit is everything about it is wrong. Like I have an ASR 10 right here. He's pressing the wrong buttons to do the wrong shit. That's an editor <laughs> thing. Like he did it. He pressed the up button to look cool. Happened to right, right. Indeed. Indeed. They definitely like just making and, an editing choice. Oh, you didn't walk a crib. You didn't walk around just handing people discs with beats on them. Uh, that was yeah. next, that, Who that had an ASR 10 to, to, to play? Yo, I did yeah, play right. My, exactly. Yo. Right, like, Midas, wait, this one's for you. Pen. This is your floppy. Here you go, Midas. Here's yours. I swear, I now go spend eighteen hundred by said, a fucking day. Like, I said, "Where's Method Man playing that disc at? He yeah. ain't got no computer, and if he did, <laughs> they wouldn't play the beat, yo. And they start cracking up because they know, like, who's? It was but, one point that he was giving out tapes, but yeah, now he's Ray, giving out floppy. Ray, when Ray went to the studio, he had a cassette. They was like, yeah, yo, cassette, five of these. Right. I like, I like that part because that was like, it felt like you can't record a real cassette. Right. So, right, I mean, right, he was right. handing out tapes before the before the floppy. You know, he did hand out cassette. <laughs> yeah, I did. I did like that. The ASR had the uh, the ASR. They they made it so that they caught the sounds of the ASR. Like when you press the button, how it clicks and all that. Exactly. So I I did like that because it did sound like. What I remember to be a big ass fucking ASR, you know what I mean? Mm. But like, uh, no, yeah, you're right. Some things they definitely nailed, like the fact that they had an ASR in the show, like that shit made me happy as fuck right there. I was, okay, they didn't just throw some other machine in there out of time, right? And like, you know, it sounds like it, like like you were saying, even the button clicks, but like the actual sounds of the shit, yeah. Like it made me really believe that, like, okay, someone in in the fucking building knew what the fuck they were doing. Mm. But when I made that tweet. That's what Zilla was referring to about the disc. The right. fucking director of the show actually fucking saw that tweet. And like, he was like, yo, uh, I put that on the music advisor. Like, so, yeah. So he passed. Like, and like, if you ask the music advisor, he'd be like, yeah, I defer to the rhythm. You know that. 
I got a funny RZA ASR headphones story later for y'all niggas that 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 you'll love. Okay. All right. No. <laughs> All right. So, do you guys want to keep going through the cast or no? No. Yeah. Well, well, no. Who else we got? To no, well, well, why don't we do this? Why don't we just talk about why? The guy that plays Dennis Coles is the worst actor in it. Oh, my worst. Yeah, worst. 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 Easily. That, that's my worst I'm casting so in the show. Excited. That's my worst casting Anytime. in history. <laughs> I used to go to brush my teeth in the morning. I brush mad hard, son. I brush and I knock the tooth out, son. And you know who owes me that tooth? Shalar Raekwon owes me that tooth, son. He took you know my what he's tooth, going son, for? my mom's mouth, son. <laughs> you know what I just realized he's going for? This guy, he's too young to know it. But he's going for like Amp the fuck up Fredro star in every role he was typecast in. Remember that? Whoa. Fredro was always a hard rock, ready to fucking yeah, kill you. Fredro but that's never how looked Fred- like he was pouting. He always <laughs> talks like that, too. But that's how Fredro really speaks If it, when he gets hyped. You know what I'm saying? But he, but, oh, but Z, what you're saying is, but Fredro can calm down. And that's where I don't, when is Dennis calm? Yeah. Except when he's with his brothers. That's what I'm saying. Like, that's Who when it works. Might be the best part of the show. The brothers are incredible. Oh, my God. They're great. But, great. but D Love, like he just, I feel like he's a person who never listened to rap in his life. Okay, like Penn said, you could be, you could be a, a a thing of clay, and we mold you into Ghostface Killer, which is which could be an advantage. But he he's he's so extra with how he talks all the time, where it's like this is never how a person would speak. He's always like, yo, son, I'm fucking saying no. These motherfuckers is always on my block. And I'm like, yo, dude, chill. He's probably not from New York because most non-New Yorkers that play like the the, 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 the New York, like hip hop kind of guy, mm-hmm. they always overdo the the, 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 the accent and they, they always over overdo it and shit. Yep. So is he from like, I mean, I don't know. No no no, like I said, I look, I'm looking at the show a different way. So I don't, I don't really, I don't, know, I don't mind, dude, because I, who, who's gonna be ghost? You know what I'm saying? Right, that's exactly. true. That's, that's true. true. So I, I that's don't, I don't mind it, because, and like I said, I don't look, I'm not looking at it for, for a thousand percent accuracy and shit. I'm looking at it for the entertainment. So, like, I, I might give it, a, I might grade it a little bit higher than you guys, but you guys are a little more critical than I am. You know, I, don't, I really don't care because okay. I'm just looking at it from just a, I, I try to remove myself and just watch it just for the entertainment purpose. Like right. the only ones that I think that I think were like super duper close. Dude that played Devon. Dude great. that played Devon. Yeah, yes. Dude He's that played Devon. He's amazing. Was, was, was like Devon. This is Devon. Yeah. Old dirty is old dirty. Yeah. Right up. Yes. Yeah, you know I mean, so the power's they, pretty good too now. Power's like moving up the ranks. Oh yeah, yeah. Power. She's you know getting mean? better with this. So, so, so there's there's a few there's a few like short shots with 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 some misses. You know what I mean? So I, I don't. I think it's all. You I, know, to I, Penn's I, point, the guy that plays Devon is. Phenomenal. That, that is divine. So, like, yo, yeah. he looks, sounds like him. The yeah. same vocal inflections, everything. You know what I mean? It's the way he stands. And, and okay, so let's talk about this. The clothing accuracy is really like something to look at. Like, they really hitting the mark with those clothes. Oh, yeah, and sometimes it's are. hard. Sometimes, but like season one, they were wearing like Avarexes in like 91. And I was yeah, like, that was a little off. That was like, uh, that, that was like seven, but, eight, eight, I, but they fixed you know what I'm it's like DMX but they first fixed album with season two. Like, yeah, right, the Vines, the Vines outfits, Carhartt's, um, Raekwon sweaters and stuff. Like, some of that stuff is like, is um, they're doing pretty well, is what I'm saying. Because sometimes you could just, you could just muff it to do the 90s, you know what I'm saying? Right. Or you could really like research it and, and try to get some accuracy going. I'm oh, pretty sure they real quick, I wanted to say this, Cash, I think I said this to you on the phone. The theory I have about the casting of the show is I said, I think I said, you remember how after Boys in the Hood blew up, right? Mm-hmm. And then one was trying to make like the hood movie. The, yeah. The, the yeah. hyper dramatic West Coast hood movie. And it kind of thins the herd because you need a lot of people to be in these movies to be yes. like the rival gang, dude, the main guy, the crew, the, the, the kid going to school, trying to make it all those other like after four or five or six of those, like now you're like six generation of these people available to be in these movies. Right. With this show, it's like, it's on Hulu. Clearly they don't have the biggest budget in the world. And it's like when they locked in the kid, Ashton Sanders, you know, who was in moonlight and a native son on HBO, which is a great movie. uh, He's like the main guy. And then everyone else is like, you know, badass for the first part, but everyone else is mostly unknown. You know what I mean? In terms of the cast. And so I feel like, that could be almost like the wire where you don't really know these people with the exception of like Wood Harris. But even even uh, what's his name was in the first remember Fredro was in the first season, he played Bird. 
He yeah. was like kind of yeah, like a known really guy. Old. Everyone else is brand new. So yeah. they have that advantage of like having all these new faces. And like we said, the guy who plays Dirty, Divine, Power, even Ray a little bit with Shameek more. But other than that, it's like there's so many people in fucking Wu-Tang. How can you really nail it nail with it every everywhere. person? Right, and we right. still haven't got, like we said, Master Killer, you guys in one scene so far. I Tappas like that, though. Jail. I like that they threw you got in there and uh, right. showed that he was a supplier. But it, it's just, I think it's just tricky because now there's so many urban dramas from all platform fucking prime Netflix. You see what I'm saying? Like, yeah, it's hard now to get the best actors to just be on this show, which is on Hulu, which isn't. I mean, they're trying to be on the ascent compared to like somebody said earlier, this is going to be like an HBO show. They're going to have the bank and the capital get like the best people they want to. And people would be more maybe willing versus like, you know, the guy playing ghost. I mean, I just I'm looking at his catalog. It's like like his third or fourth thing he ever did. Mm -hmm. You know, his credits aren't good, which could have been an asset. You know, I agree with that. I just think it's it's, it's tricky. And and there's also like like you're saying, the bankable artists, like if it wasn't HBO, then, you know, maybe Wendell Pierce would be available, like certain people they can hire off gate. Right, you know, to, to put them in those type of roles, something like that. Who knows? Okay. Do you want to take our next manscape yeah, break? Take, let's take another uh, <laughs> manscape escape. <laughs> manscape. <laughs> yeah, double down, boy. New album, Vegas Vic from Yours Truly, Zilla Rock. First solo album since '96 Mentality, out on Chong Wizard Records right now. Available around the world. You can cop the digital on iTunes if you want. You can buy it for a G on Bandcamp if you're a real boss like that. However you want to get it, we got tapes, very limited, CDs also, beautiful vinyl, all the artwork designed by PQ. Got everybody from Co-op Culture Record Crew in the mix. Album executive produced by Disco Vietnam. Just join us, fly, energetic, fun, roulette tables popping, free drinks all night with the cherry in there. Whatever you want to get, we're doubling down, we're going to get in the car, we're riding out to America's place. Vegas Vic, Zilla Rock, a new album. All right, so season two, what are your thoughts on season two so far? Um, season two, I'll start, y'all, is, is, is a little more focused. I remember season one was frustrating to me because I didn't have a grasp on the pacing. So I didn't know if they were going to do right. a time jump, how quick they were going to get into the first album. But then after season one, it's like, you know, they're training us. So now I know how long these things are. So pretty much season two will be leading us into, into the 36. Maybe not even past when the first song is played on the radio. Maybe that'll be the big moment in the end because that's kind of how the pacing has gone. So I like season two's focus. And it's like the story's getting rolling. All of us who right. we know what's going to happen. So mm-hmm. we want to get to the meat. You know what I'm saying? So we understand right. the, the little edges and the family stuff and painting a picture for RZA and his family foundation, which is actually the foundation of Wu, which is great. But now well, let's get into the action parts. You know what I'm saying? Going to the studio, radio appearances, hitting the road. I would love to see if they're going to show them doing, humping and doing shows like we do. I would love to see a little version of that, them piled into a van. Maybe even a scene or two. Uh, I wouldn't yeah. even want to say. I would just love to see what that looks like. Um, or them doing an in-store and, and like moving copies in real life. I think that would be great. My, my so, two season two things that stick out to me is one, I feel like uh, they didn't. I feel like somebody in between season one and season two had to tell the kid that plays RZA like they were like, yo, we need you to be more like RZA in season two, because Oof. in season two, his whole cadence is different. than it was totally season different. One. So totally I feel like different. I feel like somebody sat him down and had a conversation. A yeah. yeah. Um, and because it's way different. And then the other thing is. When you, you you hit something that was that was ill is the pacing because the one thing that kind of threw me off was like, bro, he shot he shot homeboy. Yep. He, <laughs> hold up, he started dating the girl, shot homeboy, yep. went to jail, and got out of prison in the same in like thirty minutes. Yeah, I was yep. like, yo, what are we looking at right now? Like, what? what? <laughs> I'm like, yo, this all happened hella quick, bro. Mm-hmm. Like, what the they fuck? play, play, they definitely play with time on that thing. So you got to get used to it. Was amazing. 
Oh he man, why did he? Rap? Oh, that was some Hamilton style. shit, bro. That was. I bro. swore he wasn't gonna do it. I said he's not gonna rap. He's gonna rap. But I said America not rap. wants to keep you down <laughs> when your skin is brown or some shit. I was like, all right, man, stop. Oh, this is man. like, look, wait. So... Not only that, they dropped the lighting. They went to the center, yep, and he's like fifty said, feet up, and the judge is looking out and out of his shit. Oh, like, like, what are we that. doing? Yeah, but like, but why? Well, I remember like in real life, he beat that murder charge in Ohio, and that's kind of yes, what started the whole thing. Yeah, but. I mean, would would the guy like just go to the police immediately after that shootout? <laughs> like, hey, if it were by that show, he, not just immediately, he teleported. <laughs> like, it was it, it happened <laughs> shit fast. <laughs> he got shot into the police station. <laughs> <laughs> he fell backwards and he landed on the, on the, on the oh man. Oh my god. Because they, yeah, they didn't show exactly what happened until a little later. See, that's a TV thing, though. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, remember that's they kind cut of it. Penn saying, right? They, yeah. they cut it, and then later on, they showed a little bit more extension of the scene, which they didn't show much more. So, you know, whatever. But you know, that's a TV thing to show, like to um, tease out more. So, the best yeah. part was when dude was on the stand and he was like Eddie Haskell, where it was like everybody <laughs> knew he was bad, but then he was like, I'm a sweet guy. <laughs> He's like, me, oh, me yeah, and my he friends told. were just walking up the street when, and suddenly. When he, uh, when he retold the story. <laughs> yeah, he's like, like yeah, yeah. He's like, I was it's helping an like, old lady carry her groceries and this man shot me out of nowhere. So well, they, like, buddy, we don't do guns around these They parts. didn't they didn't make any like that 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 court that whole court shit was fucked up to me because <laughs> they didn't even they didn't even break down like why he got off. Like no, nope. he just got off. You know what I'm saying? He, he, like, he no, because them. the thing was coming. Lawyer, you, to get off. you gotta, yeah, run, right? you gotta, you gotta <laughs> run it down. You gotta do the order. The lawyer saw the Kenny Loggins record, right? Yo, right? Yeah, is right? Why the, the fuck do you have this Kenny room? Loggins record? He freestyled in the courtroom, <laughs> and yo, you Wait, know what? He, I got pissed off. He never that. answered the question. Why do you have a Kenny Loggins record? He never fucking answered it. <laughs> oh, because he's no. He said because he's a great American songwriter. No, because he's a great American songwriter. Who the fuck would call me songwriter? At the end of the court case, because this doesn't happen, he hugged his family and walked out the other direction with them. No, he had yeah. to be like processed. Like, where's he going? Like, get right. that guy. Bring him the tub back. Like, you gotta get processed out here. You gotta uh, turn in some things, get back your property. You just walk. He just he had his arm around his sister and his mom. He was out. He walked out. Hey, he was out. He was out. Suit. Wore the he suit he came in with. Yo, man. <laughs> you better go to the back, man. You gotta get processed. But there was no science to like that whole thing. They they. <laughs> They sped through that too hard body because <laughs> there was like, wh- why did he get off? He did shoot at the dude, right? <laughs> like, right. The second yeah, person. Yeah. This is the second person he shot at in two months. <laughs> two- and Bird, no, I love, no, what got me was Bo Keem. He said, wait a minute. You He's shot one you guy think? and left. You run away. Right? And now you shot another guy and ran back the other way. What's going on? It's wait, we, we haven't talked about Bo Keem. Bo Keem is a fucking icon, right? He's yeah. doing great. Bo Keem is an icon, and he's in this movie, right? I mean, this show. And I was all excited season one when I saw him. I was like, yes, like this is a real show like Bo Keem's in it. Right. Mm-hmm. And then all he does is always like, Bobby, I promised your mother I'd uh, <laughs> get a house in Ohio. We can look at the wheat and the plains. You know, so check it. Here's so the thing. I, I forgot. I forgot how some factual parts like we're saying. So when he came around, I thought he was like a schemer. So I wasn't feeling too. it at all. He's to be abuser. It shit. was like, no, it was like he really did get the house. He really did move. And I was like, oh, Bobby, okay. I promised your mother she'd uh, get a three story <laughs> or bath. Here we but are. I think You're he's doing it fine. all up, Bobby. He just he doesn't have much to work with. You know what, so what I'm saying? He's, he's, he's like a side guy. It's become like so what we're talking about is it's become an ensemble piece. But all the characters aren't built up to their strength no. just yet. But, but we're I'm spread out for him. Like 10 guys. But I'm waiting for him. Like we said about the cookie crumbs, they spread all the time. I want him to be like, you know, Bobby, one thing is for certain. You got to protect your neck. And then they like <laughs> dropped it. Like they do that. Every fucking say- statement. Someone is saying a boo lyric. <laughs> and, Bobby, you got to learn in the service. Cash rules everything around me. <laughs> every like, every uh, time they rhyme, they're spitting like classic verses off the album. Like, yeah, like never, yeah. never just stuff in their book. Never yeah, just raps no, in their book. No, what was like, what was the yeah, what was the verse that Rayquan was fit? Because you're right, he he, he was doing the red Scarface. Yeah, yeah. That horrible <laughs> oh no, that, that, that then he was doing like I think Heaven and Hell or some shit, or he was yeah, doing he or Cream, or he was like he said Shallon, and I'm like no right. one said Shallon. Shallon wasn't even a thing yet. Yeah, but then he, he said, said that a oh, wizard for the shallow. He had with ghosts, and he didn't even like yeah. ghosts. Yeah, <laughs> me and ghosts connect. I'm like, what? <laughs> Wait a minute, you shot at his mom's crib. Where's that lyric at? Where's that lyric at? Oh yeah, man, that's, that's hilarious. Well, that's crazy. 
was crazy. Oh, oh real, real quick, it, and and are we certain that that was um, Papa Wu on the ferry? Yeah, that's it's got to be right. Is yeah. that him? Yeah. Some yeah. version of him with the, all the all the sage advice because I thought there was another Papa Wu earlier. Yeah, I did too. Right. Last told season, me in the first season. Did, well, the guy that was saying, "What's today's mathematics?" I thought right. that was the Papa Wu guy, and then they showed King Just, which I confused for a second. I said, "Oh, that might be Papa Wu," but I think this one, this guy, um, the fairy guy, is, is more akin to it because remember he kept changing his science depending yep. on who he was talking to. Correct. So when he was talking to Rizzo, he rolls out the um, you know, the, the seven in the, uh, in, the, in the stars and stuff. So it's mm-hmm. like it's a little different than. Him with um, Dennis, anything for sale with the tapes. and then with Devon, he's following him. You know, so that was cool. <laughs> so, did y'all like but, the fairy episode? Did y'all y'all dig that shit? No. no. Okay, good. <laughs> Last, Yo, can a little I bit ask louder. you guys something weird? Like this just struck me. It was weird, and I brought this up to Zilla. I think the scene with Divine and Power. Why did that throw you? Because there was like weird energy between the two of them. Yeah, because they're old friends, and they were no, just no. It wasn't that the, man. It was like the way like what? Divine was like. You know, my whole life I've been like trying to find something, and he just like gives him this look. Those bedroom eyes. <laughs> nah, like, man. Like, oh, man. Whoa. Oh, whoa. No, I'm telling you, go back that. and watch it, man. They're I watched ship it. Those two. I got that he was saying looking for something to They're do. They're trying to ship him. <laughs> no, no, last. I think you're pushing hard. I didn't see any of that. Have I you? saw two cats that haven't gotten along in a while, and they just made up by talking about childhood stuff to, to kill the tension. That's what that was. Have, yeah. have any of you guys ever met Power before? No. no. Yeah, I met Power before. Hey, he's serious as shit. Yeah. That's a, that's a serious I, motherfucker right there. He, he actually I, he actually asked me to be, be an intern back 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 when I was in, in high school and shit. <laughs> wow. Uh, like at, at Wu Wear or like Yeah, Wu Wear. Yeah, yo. Mm, I met yo. him at, I met him at Loud. Wow. Before Chief. And I wow. had a, and I had a, and I had a um I had a hand truck with, with mad tapes and CDs and something. He was like, yo, where you going? I'm like, I'm going to the train. He was like, you taking all that on the train? I'm like, I got to get home somehow. He was like, yo, I like that. Mm. <laughs> he gave me his number. And wow. I, and I used to talk to him. I spoke to him like, I used to talk to him on a regular. This is this is when Wu-Tang was. It was Wu-Tang, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's crazy. And, and, yeah. He wanted me, and, he, and um, he wanted me to be an intern and shit, but you know, I live in Best Star in Staten Island, kind of far. So mm, very so that, far. Yeah, that went, you know what I'm saying? So, but yeah, but yeah, I, I used to fuck with him a little bit. Yeah, he he real serious. Wow. Like dudes be talk, yo, dudes be like, yo, with power. I'm like, yo, that ain't the nigga to fuck with right there. Yeah, that never nigga, thought so. He's Even a, when he was he's in black gangster. and white. Even yeah. in black and white, he was serious as hell. Yeah. Hey, character. he's just like that in real life, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know see, he's a see, gangster. Guy, but see, his cool. character, his character and the dude playing him reminds me so much of like Stringer Bell, only in the sense that he's like, I don't fuck around. I'm really smart. But the the guy who's playing him is so natural to me. Yeah. Like, I don't feel yeah. like I'm watching someone read lines on. of force. Yeah. Like we said about the ghost face thing, like this guy's not putting on like I'm a New York street dude. Don't fuck with me. He's just real nonchalant about like uh, because I'm nonchalant. That means I'm more dangerous. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Versus like, mm-hmm. yo, I'm saying, give me the biscuit, give me that shit. Like, Ghost is always way too turned up. But the <laughs> the very scene, like up until the last ten minutes, it was like really bizarre. Just because Ghost is like hiding behind pretzels, waiting. To shoot. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> it was like very strange. When he was looking through the pretzels, and, like you're looking back at him, and he's like, oh, just give me two salty ones. Yeah, those two. Um, but then. <laughs> So well, when they're on the top, it was some really cool cinematography, which is them on the water. And you know what I mean? And um, but when they so then when Riza starts talking to them, you know, like in the, I'm Yo, not gonna why, the first talk, of all, I want to talk about this. It was good. I really like, you know, how he cool started he tying them the all point, in when he started getting to the point when he was doing right. the platitudes. So it's like a baseball game and we're all standing on bases right now. Like <laughs> right. it was like yes. taking too long with the with the platitudes and swords get quiet. Like he had to get to the point when he was addressing everybody individually. And that's right. I agree but it was I, I thought that was the most powerful part so far of the show. And again, when we air this episode, there's going to be another episode airing. But it was just great when he was just really opening up and saying, like, hey, go need each other. Right. Like Everybody if you left Steubenville and my pregnant or my sister and my nephew to come here with me, I'm telling you, I need more like I ain't shit. And then going to Ray being like, you're getting all these popping looks. But the people you're rolling with are garbage. Like, they're not going to look out for you. And then Divine, like, you're a felon. What job are you going to get? You took care of the family. Now how are you going to take it? Your identity is crushed. And then the power being like, 
you lock down the streets. We need an organic street movement because we got to start from the bottom up and not from the top to the bottom. So I thought that was like the most sensical thing, even though, you know, again, like like uh, Mida said, like they gave the kid Ashton Sanders a, st- a stern talking to like speak like the RZA at all times with no emotion like he does it. But it was like memory said, like, we don't have fathers. We went to the streets for that. And now look what the streets have given us back. Now we got to roll with each other. I was like, OK, now here we are. Like it's picking up steam, you know, 10 hours into the show to see like, OK, can we record fucking protecting that? Can we bring in meth and deck when they get out? Of you got like, can we start doing it? Because now everything's been planted for like the layman that don't know. Because I, I like to know like a person who doesn't know shit about woo, like what their opinions are of this show. Yeah, that would be good sense to them. Because for us, again, like, you know, we're either um, my my ex-girlfriend was watching the first season with me and she loved that shit. And she don't know nothing about Wu. Oh, nice. that's good. That there it is. Yeah. Great. Nothing. Zero. It, she mm. just looked at it. It was like it was like watching. What's that? What's that? Uh, It was like watching Top Top Boy or whatever for her. Oh, the yeah. 90s, the 90s is a cool era. So it's yeah. like, you know, a lot of people just want to watch 90s shit. So they yeah. might yep. be better for that aspect, you know? Mm-hmm. Yep. So can we get to the, the elephant in the room? Riz's voice. What the fuck is up with it? He had to go back and get his brothers. He had to go back. To I mean, so my, my theory is he's supposed to sound like a Kung Fu overdub. Well, what he's doing is <laughs> it's funny because um, uh, he's the way I see it is like he said to himself or somebody gave him a note. All right. Try to talk like the RZA. But we all know being Wu heads. All of us has imit- we all can do a, a basic reason. We've all imitated his voice, this but we, it's it's kind of comical when we do it because it's not our natural voice. So to me, if he did it the real way we do Riz's voice, it would be too much off the cuff. If he did, you know what I'm saying? Because I remember I was telling Z this Rizza, when you used to see him early, early on, when they was first doing stuff, you would see the footage and stuff. He was always trying to talk in quotes. He was always trying to give some, a quote to the video people that they would put up on a magazine or something. He never really talked regular when the when the cameras was rolling. So if Ashton is looking at that stuff as like his true. basis, he's always going to be, oh, Rizzo was always on, which is not always true. But so he's trying to be on and he's trying to make an imitation of what he thinks the Rizzo voice is. And it's off. Like, it's just totally off. But I think it's. If he did it, it would it would come up even Doesn't worse. Doesn't have the marble mouth thing that Riz yeah. has. Like, right. He's not really small. It's kind of difficult like because... Marlon did in The Godfather and, like, put cotton right. swabs in his mouth or something it, so he could it, have that marble mouth sound. And Riz kind of has, like, a, no no disrespect, he kind of has, like, like a speech impediment. Right, so right. Like, right. right. Yeah. You can't have a yeah. motherfucker as a star of a show they can with, talk with, right. with, it, with, it, with it impediment that deep because nobody's going to know what the fuck's going on. So, uh, right. Good point. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, one one thing that just popped in my head while you guys were saying that was, see, it's it's unfair, right? Because most times when you play, like we're in a weird era now where the guys that they're playing are guys that have so much media out there. Mm-hmm. Like we've heard RZA, right. we've seen 10,000 RZA interviews and, right. and heard this many songs and heard and seen them and live. Him being in movies. Him, him being, being in movies, actor. like right. he's so... Like, it's not like playing somebody from the 70s where there's only some clips right here right. and there. Like, everybody's seen RZA talk for 30 years. You know what right. I'm saying? Right. Like, it's kind of it's kind of hard to 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 tear yourself away from what he actually sounds like. Mm-hmm. And he's still so, talking. He's out doing the press. You know what I'm saying? Like, right, right, right. right. But he's, but, he's but also had trading now. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't sound like I did it in 1990. Right, exactly. Right. Yeah, exactly, mm-hmm. exactly. Definitely. He don't sound that much different though. He he, he, do- he, he does, bro, because he would not be able to do those movies and shit. Facts, facts. You know, you know what I facts. mean? Which is which is interesting because he still sounds so damn unique that good lord, imagine how much training he would have had to have. You know what I'm saying? Like crazy. He's so always I had a theory that he was always talking, I don't know how true it was, with his fang fronts in his mouth. They, mm. they added to the to the speech impediment, the list thing that he had. So it's always like, you know what I'm saying? Where's the zigzag, ziggler, stand perpendicular. It was always going to be some marble mouth thing. I remember because there was also a weird enunciation from him yeah. too. Because mm-hmm. when he would rap, he didn't mumble through words. You see what I'm saying? Like he hit all the syllables. He wasn't just like humming through words. So it was just a strange cadence that, to be honest, only RZA could do. So I guess whatever Ashton is doing, his, his facsimile of what RZA only can do. But I think I would say this: it's a, it's funny to us, but it's better than whatever he was doing in season one. 
In season one, he was just a guy. Yeah. Like, he's, you know what I'm saying? So, so I've been going through the IMDb page for the show. And there's a lot of cameos that I didn't notice. And maybe you guys did, but I'm going to run through them and, and tell me if you know. Some of them haven't happened yet, but I think they're interesting. So Prince Poe was a cameo. Not the, somebody acting as Prince Poe. Oh, okay. Prince Poe? What's that? Organized Confusion Prince Poe? Yeah, Organized Confusion yeah. Prince Poe. Wow. Uh, in season two, they're going to have Scarface. Oh, sure. Nice. Um, they're going to have Cuba Gooding Sr. Okay. 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 Um, who else? Uh, Stretch Armstrong. Fuck yeah. That's Dante dope. Ross. Yeah. Oh, that's really dope. Yeah. Um, who else is in here? The Easy yeah, Mo B. Ooh. He was cut. in the first season. Um, I know else? Just Ice was in the first season. Just Ice was in there. Yeah. Eric mm. B and Rakim. Yeah, that was in the yeah, first season. Wow. Nice. They performed. Mm-hmm. They the first, yeah, they Prince were Paul, who we already mentioned. Right. Um, the Tommy Boy people's uh, what's her name, Monica, and and the head of Tommy uh, Monica Boy. Lynch. Yeah, Monica I think she Lynch was in the first Steve season. Rifkin. Right, yeah, she was the one, and Steve Rifkin. They're about to pop yeah. more, more up. I liked how they snuck in the um, in my nemesis, the Eric Sermon. Yeah, that was your nice. nemesis. Yup, yeah, they got that over there. Slick. But that was slick how they did that. That was yeah. nice, and yeah. you know, what I'm saying it's not too overbearing, and it's like you know, and then Ray tells a story. That's a nice cameo without it being too. Yeah. Ham, ham fisted and, or whatever. And Papa Wu was one of the five percenters actually in the mm. in season ah, one. Okay. So that's got to be the so, guy with, with the um. No, the actor. Mathematics. I mean, Papa Wu was the actor playing one of the five. Oh, percenters. oh, before oh, he well, passed. Rest in yeah. peace. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Wow. Roxanne oh, wow. Chante. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. That, that was Daddy the first Kane. season one. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So because I, I, the, think I think that's good for the show, but to show people that don't know any better that they were all around each other like that. These yeah. bills were stacked. Like if they did a show, there's like six of them there, you know, Ryan and L.O. was there and, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I think that's good to show. All right. So, so here's my last question for everybody. Cool. The show seems to be a success. Everybody's talking about it. People are into it. What would be the next group, like next crew or group mm. that you would want to see get a show like this? Uh, Dungeon <laughs> Family. Oh, good one. I won't be out for Ooh. shits and giggles. Farsa. Interesting. Farsa. I, go, I, say, go. I say Diddy, bad boy. Ooh. Ooh. Good. But Diddy can't have nothing to do with it because he would strike so much stuff. He would try to erase it and change it. Yeah. You're right. That would be dope. Damn, that's a good one. Like, I don't know if it'd make good TV, but I would like to see the whole Gangstar Foundation. That, mm. Okay. Big yeah, Sugar and um and um group home and now. Yeah, yeah, that whole shit. I mean nice. I don't know about a crew, but I'd love to see like a TV show based around the tunnel in the in the nineties. Oh, that'd oh be yeah, that'd be great. That'd be really good. I'd be great. And I would love a reality uh show style murder ink. Like mm. just have the trashiest people playing them. <laughs> And just, and just show, yo, you know what though? On some crew stuff, it would it would be really ill to see a show called a show called Queens Bridge. Yeah, you know what oh, I mean? yeah, cool. show yeah. that would be amazing. Just, just get all these different guys. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that would be ill. You know, so, start so, with Shan and go yes. all the way. Through. So, yeah, yeah, so yeah, has yeah. That, did any of you guys ever see? I feel like I'm the only person in the world that watched The Deuce on HBO. I never saw it. I know of it. We know it's a great it. show. Yeah. Okay, when, so it, it's a Method Man's in it, Black Thoughts in it, uh, Maggie Gyllenhaal, James Franco before he was a perv. Well, he was he might have been actively molesting people. They kind of like they just sidestepped that, and then James Gandolfini's son was in it. A lot of people okay. from The Wire. It's everybody from The Wire. It's like their their latest show. David Simon and, show, right? David Simon, right? And so it takes place in Forty Second Street, the Deuce, and the first season is like the early seventies. Then the second season is like late 70s as they're trying to clean up the deuce and make Times Square like a family thing. Then the third season is like mid 80s when it's like the porn industry is like VHS and shit. So it shows like the history of like sex workers over like a 15 year stretch and then like 80s New York. So it goes from like disco to like AIDS epidemic and it goes from like, you know, pimps and prostitutes to like peep shows and whatever. If you do like a Queensbridge show, it would be cool to do like start with the Shan era Shan, yeah. and then over time get to like Illmatic dropping and then maybe mob, like murder, mob murder music down, you right. know, shit like that to like do the full scope where I think this shows 
The only thing I don't like about this show, like pacing wise, is like, again, like we spent so much time with like the like the Diggs family dramas, like so much time. Whereas like Method Man, you don't really know anything about his character. You, you don't really know what's going on in Method Man's life. Who's yeah. arguably the most famous fucking person in Wu-Tang. Right? Yeah. Saying that, like we're getting more into the Ray world. Yeah. We're getting into the ghost world. Sure. But like we still don't really know a lot about like what Dirty does outside of this season. He's just kind of like is well, funny, you know. To that point, that's why I was telling my man. I said, "Could you ever imagine a world in which we'd be watching two seasons of a show about the RZA? That's like, this, is, this is Crazy. bananas to me because I don't Crazy. look at it. I don't look at it as a Wu Tang show. Mm. I look at it as a RZA, RZA show. RZA show. <laughs> yes. But 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 to be honest, yeah, that's, that's Wu Tang, right? Wu Tang is, is a RZA yeah. show featuring I mean, yeah, eight yeah. other dudes. Yep, yep. That's actual facts. That's yeah. actual facts. Yeah. So I, I I see you on that, Z, and I see I, I see what y'all are saying. Um. Yeah, I, I think again, like it, if they do a time jump, the good thing is Wu Tang's catalog is so vast that right. it wouldn't hurt. Even if they jump, if they don't jump, it wouldn't hurt. And if they do jump, it wouldn't hurt. They jump to another. If they jump to Wu Tang Forever and they get to right. that, if like that season three is just Wu Tang Forever, you know what I mean? Like them falling apart or something. That like would after, be dope. After, that, that would be, be dope. Like them would walking off the rage tour. Little time on the solo album, so like just like they did in Ohio. Like you know, I like think I think the solo albums. Right. Maybe maybe it's that. maybe it's the gift and the curse though, Alaska. Maybe because all of those different albums are on different labels, it's hard to 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 focus Possibly, on yeah. one or two of them. Whereas yeah. the Wu Tang stuff, they own where they can. Because if you notice, also in the second season, there's a lot of more full on songs and not interpolations. In the first season, they were playing like versions of the songs, and I don't. Yeah. I think they didn't have the copyright stuff straight just yet. Yeah, because like tell. the whole season one was like the build up to like Seventh Chamber. Right, that? like they just and keep playing that beat. That. Yep, and I'm like, that's a cool album cut, but that's not like a it is, moment. I'm telling you, it has to be with copyrights and stuff because now it seems like it like they playing reunited. I actually, right. they actually play. You're right. Like when when Riz is flipping through beats by himself, he's playing like stuff from he's playing Cuban um, Link shit. Yeah, yeah, he's playing Cuban yeah. Link shit, playing yeah. Iron Man shit sometimes. So like, I think now the wellspring is open. The mm. show made some money because look, I go to New York all the time. They got a whole display of American Saga in the trains. The turnstiles yeah. are yellow with a W yeah. on it. Ooh, and they, yeah, crazy. Um, Penn knows crazy. they have the big, big pictures of Ashton on the um the columns. Like he's all big. They showing different characters. You can crazy. walk through like a woo section That's on fire. the A. Yeah, yeah. Crazy. so they, they getting there. Yeah. It's amazing to see, man. It's amazing to see. That is. That's fine. That's something that we grew up off of. It's something like so to me, it's like, you know, that's that's Local shit, mm. right? And to see it take over the world and, and, and be viewed as in such a a regard, where it's like American folklore and shit, bro. That's yep. you know what I mean. Like I, I yep. guess that's how, like, I, maybe how the older the older guys felt when 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 the, when the mob stories were told. You know what Ooh. I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Oh, you know, and bit. Yep. You know, maybe that's how they felt because those stories are told. Decades and decades later, and people still tell them so stories like this. The fact that this is even a thing, man, is is just amazing. You know what I'm saying? Like this shit is just it's the real, really, man. Mm-hmm. I think I think they reached a plateau. Like to me, it reminds me of um, I don't know if y'all remember this cartoon. I'm a little older than some folk. That American um pro star shit where it was Bo Jackson, Michael mm-hmm. Jordan, and Wayne Gretzky. Wayne Gretzky. Cartoon. Yeah. It was like they were <laughs> saving people, but it was like those three had reached a certain pinnacle where they're kind of transcending right. just their sport. So now we can make them into cartoon superheroes. And like what might have said early in the show, Wu-Tang has transcended just being a rappers or a rapping group. They're a right. whole event. We yeah. always say that. Like they're one of the best things. They're the meteor that hit hip hop. Like there's yeah. a lot of milestones with hip hop. But Wu-Tang, everything was against them. They were dissing all this. I, rem- I remember in real time, there's too many of them. It's too many. Like that's they, people were saying that for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks. It's too many of them. Too many until they seen a video for "Protect Your Neck" and they're like, "Oh shit!" You know what I'm saying? Just that Man, moment. So, it. yeah. So I think just them being a cultural milestones for us to get this interpolation type cartoon slash superhero slash live action saga. You know, we we critique it, but we like um, Crip was saying every Wednesday we're gonna be glued and, and oh, yeah. we're just happy it's it. Right, you so. know. Yeah, to just real quick to echo what uh, I interviewed Pete Rock beginning of this year, and he was like, they're the most incredible shit to ever happen in rap history. That's a yeah. fact. It's yeah, a fact. Like, they really are. He's like, they are. 
everything we learned from the comic music, books to the formation yeah. to yep. the styles. He's he said he was like every single he was like there was never been a rap group where every single motherfucker was nasty. Right. Yeah. For them. There's always a yeah. guy that carrying or somebody's cousin. This wasn't the right. case. And I remember there being well. so many of them. <laughs> what what? Say something about my man you. Let's let's keep going. <laughs> All right. Then. No, but just the just the point of we know that there's always somebody whose skill level is just a little bit lower than everybody else. And you're kind of waiting for that. But the fact they had like nine cats and you got to the seventh cat, and he's still dope. Like, you know, used to tell well, that, to be I used to tell dudes point. about you God and because and, I, you know, I talk to people all the time who don't like you God and Master Killer, but I'm like, bro, they they they're in a group with the best rappers ever. Right. Like what what like like even if you are amazing, you're gonna sound kind of corny next to Method Man, who's one of the great rappers ever. You know what I mean? Like it's he ain't like a regular dude, bro. Like agree, right. agree. These, these dudes is the greatest rappers. Ever, <laughs> you right. know what I mean? Ghost face. Yeah, when, like, when they came, when they came out, it, they they weren't automatically the greatest rappers ever. We, no, it's, it's, that's it's, true. It's easy to say that now. Yeah, right? you know what I mean. But in 1993, they were they were they were they were dope, but they weren't the greatest rappers ever. None of them were. Well, right. they was, but they were special. Yeah. Even in ninety, even yeah. in ninety three, they were special. Without you know question, I mean? yeah, without question. But like you know, to be Master Killer's got to be tough, bro. Like. Who you said know? Master Killer? I didn't say no, no, no. I'm just saying. I'm, no, I'm not saying you, but like Master to be Killer, fire, bro. No, like, Master man, Killer, Master, Killer is yeah. fire, but to be Master Killer's got to be difficult right, when right, right. the other guy in your group is Raekwon. You know what I'm yes. saying? Like, yeah. Oh man, that's kind of difficult, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, no, I, bet, it, it, I think it's, it's like if Dr. Dre, if you were the production group place. with Dr. Dre, like right. you're a producer and Dr. Dre's the other producer in the group. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's kind of difficult. <laughs> But I feel like they all, and the, the irony of, but the reality is they all get their shine. They all have had their plateaus. You know what I'm saying? Like certain songs, Capadonna is killing every last Wu member. You feel me? Right. So I'm with that too. You know, so um, we just, I think we're just glad that the show was here because I, I know I am. Uh, it, it's great. I have a great time. It's, it's a wonderful time. Yeah, I absolutely love it. Even though I make fun of it, I love it. It's exactly. Wonderful. Hey, friends, it's me your friendly neighborhood podcast host, Alaska. And I'm here to tell you about an exciting new project that I just released with my friend Jason Griff. You might know Jason Griff from his many appearances on the Call Out Culture podcast, as well as his groundbreaking work with the Griff Scorsese Midnight Express album. Also, his solo project, Fireside Chats. You need a sweater and a bearskin rug for that one, fellas. Anyway... We just dropped a new record called Human Zoo. And Human Zoo examines the cages that we put around society and the self-imposed cages we put around ourselves. It features exciting tracks like Reboot featuring Fat Boy Sharif and Animal Farm featuring Love Ulysses. We also have additional vocals from the likes of Alex Ludovico. Not Ludovico, Ludovico with a C. See what I'm saying there, people? And Prem Rock. And then the All Hook All the Time track featuring vocal stylings from Curly Castro, Zilla Rocca, Def C, Rob Sonic, Breezley Bruin, and Open Mike Eagle. If you like the rap music, folks, you're going to want to get this record. It's a must-have for every true aficionado. And you can get it at insubordinaterecords.com. Alaska, out. Like, when we look back, did this exist? How many seasons, whatever it goes for. We were like, yo. We'll take out like a little show. You're like, you know what I'm saying? Yo. It's gonna be a thing. It's definitely gonna be a thing. I'll remember this more than um what was Vanilla Ice's movie? Tougher than Ice. What was that called? <laughs> Tougher than Ice. Yo, yo, but we we got to go run this movie. Run this season Vanilla Ice movie. Tougher than Ice. <laughs> we, we, cool we, as Ice. Cool we as gotta ice. salute Wu Tang because like man. 
Bro, all right, so you, what you just said is, L. we're going to look back and go, man, they had a show. But, like, we already do that. Look back and go, man, they had a video game. Yes. Yes. Back, I, you I know, man, that, man, 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 they had a, a comic book. Right. Man, yes. they had a, you know what I mean? RZA came out with two books. Like, these things keep happening. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Superheroes, yeah. man. Yeah. Yes. Yes. It was like superheroes, man. Yeah. Yes. Straight up. Definitely our own, our modern day superheroes and we all look up to them. And they yeah. still nasty with, some of them are still nasty with the pen. Some hey, meth, okay. meth, meth might have got better. Yeah, Woo. yeah he's, meth, he's, meth he's, is on a run right he now. He might he's be better right. than I ever heard him write lyrics on a page. I, I don't know, I don't know if he's rapping better, like, Style wise, his bars, bars? bars? No, the bars are crazy. Man. Man. Be watching them battles. That's why. Yo, mm. yes. and he true, said true. He, he actively stopped cursing. He said true. he actively stopped writing curses in his raps, like maybe ten years ago. And he said yeah, he, he doesn't was, curse. Trying to see if people noticed. So, but but with that, that leaves him more room to you know get that bar work going. And you and you right, Penn. He is watching battling. He's done some stage battles and stuff. So he's definitely writing with a lot. Yeah, more he's out here. He's rhyming so, hard. Yeah, we, We've had conversations. I like I, I know <laughs> like, okay, like, I do some heavily. Mm. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah. man. But that keep them all fucking sharp, man. Like listen <laughs> to the listen to what these brothers are coming with nowadays, you know? That's fire. He's, he's next level yeah. with it. Shout yeah. shot to meth, man. Big shout out to meth. So so why don't we wrap this up? Uh let's just go around the horn and everybody let us know what they got, what uh what you're promoting, what you got out, what people could check you, things like that. Uh, Crip, you kick it off. Oh, Crip, yeah. Yo, um, I got an album uh called Parada. It's out wherever the fuck you get music. Yeah, and I drop everywhere. Uh, I drop uh instrumental singles every Friday. Mm. Hit them with the hee haw. Yeah, Tell them. trying Spotify, Bandcamp, all that shit. Don't don't go to Spotify. Go to Bandcamp so I can see some money. Yeah. That's um. Cool. Yeah. Um. You know, uh, Midas got a. Uh, uh, pr- uh, the vinyl for where the sidewalk ends is out. Uh, shout out Chong Wizard. Bong. The uh, um, about to I just dropped live nigga rap with my man Sharp. You know what I'm saying? That's out right now. Live nigga rap, which which they covered in our local magazine out here, which I think is hilarious because they wrote the whole title in there. Nice, that's right. <laughs> so, so, represent, shout out, represent. So, so shout out to that live nigga rap is out. Mm. Um, and then I got a project, a couple projects coming, but uh. Got a project with Saru Gold on the on Ooh. the horizon. Nice so we, word. We're we gonna, we gonna hit the ground on that one too. I am. What's up? What's up with you, Penn? Uh, a lot of shit, man. October third, we'll be in Atlanta. MC War. Uh, go to mcwar.com. Get your tickets, your pay per views. We got Vado versus Saigon. Oh, I saw Ooh. that. I saw yeah. that. Yeah, okay. Vado. I love Vado. With K Slay. We got Charlie Clips versus OP with DJ Screen, Slave Seven versus Big K, E Ness versus Big T, a mm. bunch of other matches. And this and this is we going back to, to how we do it, man. For the, the first two rounds are actually over beats. Oh, I love it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then the, the I love third it. round is acapella. Nice. You know I mean? So yeah, we got that October 3rd. Just... And, oh, and, and, and the Broad Street bully Benny She will be there Woo. with us as well. Love nice. It. Nice. Get so, yeah, get that. Go to mcwar.com, get the pay per view if you want to be. We're gonna be or if you want to pull up live. I might have to pull up, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me know, you know what I'm saying. But yeah, that's that's what's popping, you know. When I'm finishing up this project, got this immortal technique album coming out on uh, the, the middle passage. So yeah, man, just just tap in, man, you know, trying to stay busy, man, transgressing in a pandemic. You feel me, mm-hmm. yes, sir. Is Castro, you got record dropping very shortly. Oh, yeah. So I got my record, Little Robert Hutton, dropping on the 30th, which by the time this episode airs, it'll be this Friday. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so it'll be on all, you know, your DSPs and um, probably a CD pre-order in there. So just support the kid. Check it out. It's my best work ever. All right. Agreed. All right. There we go. Boom. Uh, and then my latest album on Chong Wizard Records, Vegas Vic. We're out here. We got CDs and tapes, still vinyl. Um, kind of may have might have got his vinyl before I did from the same label. It's kind of fucked up, Sean. Right. Um, <laughs> uh, put in my order the same time as everybody else. Uh, here we go. Three months later, no vinyl. That's just the world. <laughs> so. Hey, hey, at least, at least I don't even have no copies of my shit. Oof. None. All right. Chong I don't have them. any. Black <laughs> clouds. Black Good. clouds all around. So yeah. you and I are in the same space. Now, now I'm going to get them. 
But I ain't got him. But I ain't got him yet. You know what I mean? Oh, so I'm, I'm out here. That's great. We both Chong have gonna get zero this, copies. They send his, everybody sending a kite to Chum. Everybody's like, nah, that's job. that's that's my brother, man. Shout that's out to yeah. the boy. Shout out yes, to him. So that the CDs and tapes and finals available still. And then uh running low on hoodies and crew neck shirts for the record, so you can get that at three dollar pistol.com. Um, and that's pretty much it. Alaska. Yeah, that's been uh, human zoo out with uh myself and Jason Griff on uh insubordinate records, came out a couple weeks ago. Yeah, and uh CDs are already sold out. The cassette CD combo is almost out, and then we got a t-shirts and sweatshirts and throw pillows throw pillow so you know it's it's the throw pillow pulls the room together the throw pillow it really is dope it really oh wait it my album's coming out on backwards i'm sorry alaska just reminded me to tell but talk about the label that you're dropping so backwards. there you go shout on oh, cats castro on the uh the magnum condom sponsored what, oh, yeah, who, no. what? So up rocks and magnum up condoms rocks. presents did a, uh, did a piece alchemist arm and curly hammer. castro and arm and alchemist. hammer and uh, Willie Green. It's incredible. I got goosebumps watching it. It's a great eight minute video. You can watch it anywhere. Yeah, Just search Magnum on condoms on the internet. Great things will happen to you. <laughs> it's going on. Nothing right weird. Video. Is that legit? Oh. That's legit. That's no, legit. Yeah, yes, I'm, legit. I'm, I'm, I'm being very serious. No, yes. When you search no, I, that, I, you're not going to find it. You're not no, going to find it when you search I that. I did a battle for um, Magnum condoms like years ago. So I know they do other, like, they do outside the box shit. So I was there. You go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's up rocks piece. So um, called scenes. So like do that like up rock scenes and try to type in Arm and Hammer or backwards. Yep. It's, it's yep. Or up. alchemist, whatever you want to oh, yeah. do. That's pretty much it. All right, y'all. We are call out culture. Thank mm-hmm. y'all all for showing up. Mm-hmm. Talking about Wu Tang American Saga. We appreciate all y'all showing up for us. Um, tonight was great. So much. Castro, we, great we are like brothers. But you move like the wind. You are unpredictable. And then still blowing in my face. <laughs> so I'm doing my, my, my Rizza outro. Alaska, you hold the mic. But does the mic hold you? I don't think so. I am Castro. And I'm about to smack Zilla with my hell uh, wind staff. If he doesn't stop the Rizza impersonation. Oh, Midas, God. he is a beast on the mic. But off the <laughs> mic, is he, is he holding the, is he a King Midas? I don't know. He's my brother. Oh. It's about brotherhood. <laughs> Zilla's yeah. going to need to go into Rizzo rehab after this because he's wild. Pen, your pen is poison. But, Stop. But these... <laughs> no, I, yo, I just peeped. The, the dude that plays Divine is a Spanish cat. Yeah, I see that. He's got a shaved oh, head, no that. beard. Yo, he looks incredible. Look His last that. name is Martinez. I would have yeah. never oh, guessed this. face look Dominican too. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Versatility, yo. Versatility, oh, the name of the game. Man. But, yo, we just implore everybody to watch Wu-Tang, absorb Wu-Tang. Wednesday, watch Wednesday, Wednesday. Hulu. Watch it. Hulu. If you listen to us, you probably listen to Wu-Tang, but if you haven't, Fuck's wrong? You listen to Wu Tang. You're, you're, yeah. you're gonna be a fucking asshole your whole life. Are you serious? Are you, you listen to the saying? show? Listen to Do your due diligence, but yeah. soon. But also, if you're into the show. Now we got the meat coming. We got the juice coming. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Shadow boxing around the yes. corner. Tears. We might see the recording the tears. So stay mm. tuned because I know I will be. All yeah. right, we'll call our culture. Patreon. Follow us on Twitter, Patreon, Patreon YouTube, YouTube all the good stuff. Instagram. You know, holler the kid. Leave him. Leave a message on iTunes. We love those. We read love them out loud. Shout, Shout out to all our Patreon subscribers. We might have some more goodies for you soon. Um, maybe I'll do an early album listening thing. Like yeah, last one. Live demo session. Yeah, right, we'll think it. about it. We'll see. And shout out to Poison Pen and Midas coming through. First timers. Yeah. Love. Yeah. I, yo, let me know. I'm I'll be back whenever, bro. Yeah, I, 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 I have fun. It was great. Me too, man. I I I'll bring some liquor next time. I had to yeah. I didn't have any drink. I had smoke though, but I'll bring some drink next time. <laughs> Yeah. All right, we got y'all, so we're going to hold y'all. Crypt- cryptic now, three-time champ. Who's Cryptic Castro? He's a three-time champ now. Who three-time champ, that's yeah. um, uh, b- 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 uh, John, John Paxson. Johnny John Paxson. Paxson. All right, Johnny we'll see what he went to John Paxson. There you go, three-time champ. On the show. All right, y'all. Everybody have a good night. We hey. call out culture. All our call out coaches. Stay call out culture. Later. Stay culture. <laughs>